Great. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for choosing the session and dedicating a few valuable minutes of your lunchtime uh, to this uh, subject, migrating 25k lines of end scripting to Gradle. Um, I'm going to introduce myself real fast because this is a quickie session, so 15 minutes only. My name is Hanno. I am from the Netherlands. I'm a father. I have two kids and a wife. I work at this company called InfoSupport, which is a Dutch uh, IT company. I work there as a Java software engineer. And my current pr project involves the Dutch train company, um, which is the company that operates most of the trains in our country, in the Netherlands. Around 6,000 trains are, um, are moving across uh, the railroads each and every day in uh, the Netherlands. Um, and these are the three build tools that I've worked with so far, Maven, Gradle, and and also, uh, which is the basis for the migration and uh, the reason why I wanted to get involved in this project in the first place. Well, I won't be uh, uh, speaking uh, just on, on my own behalf, but I, I've carefully selected three experts to, to help me with this topic. And the first expert is Mr. Leonard Storvelt. I guess you've heard of him quite a few times because he invented uh, Linux and also Git, the version control system. The second expert will be Mr. Mark Reynolds, which is Java's chief architect. And the third one is Mr. Louis van Gaal, who used to be a manager at Manchester United. And I guess um, all fans are very happy that he's now the former manager of Manchester United. But this is a man who can say things very bluntly and uh, rude sometimes. And um, I'll happily use one of his quotes in my presentation. So, build scripting. Um, this has changed quite a lot in the, in the past decades. Um, uh, in in the, the decade when our, the system that I have worked on started, uh, like the 70s, the, the 80s, um, a build tool did only compiling and packaging, not very much more actually. Um, and of course this has changed in uh, the recent years because uh, to start with, your project can contain multiple programming languages because, well, just take a web application, for example, you need to have a front-end language and a back-end language. There also needs to be some database scripting, so there are multiple programming languages that you all have to take care of in your build scripting. Um, automated tests, we want to run them uh, as fast as possible, as soon as possible. And also, we want to integrate code as early as possible. And finally, we want to deploy our software to test acceptance and project production environments. Um, and we want to do this as often as we can. So build tooling should really have more, um, more functionality than just compiling and packaging. Um, well, um, there used to be just one build tool, which was called Make, invented in the late 70s. And um, uh, the Java uh, equivalent of that is Apache Ant. And Apache Ant defines builds in XML. Well, what can we say about XML? Let's start by being nice. It really excels at e expressing hierarchical data. But what is the problem? Build scripting logic doesn't easily fit a hierarchy. Uh, it consists of conditional logic, of repeating logic, and these are some concepts that you can express much more concisely in a programming language. Um, and this is uh, the thought uh, behind uh, Gradle. Well, the first expert was, what does Mr. Linus Storvelt think of XML? What do you think he thinks of it? Does he like it? Does he hate it? Does he hate it with all of his strength? He does. He says XML is crap, really. There are no excuses. XML is nasty to pass for humans, and it's a disaster to pass even for computers. There's just no reason for that horrible crap to exist. I, l I love this quote. You should really check out his Google Plus profile. He has some more hilarious rants on all kinds of IT uh, technology. So we don't like XML, but, but what, what, uh, what else is there? I mean, are there more things in, in Ant that we don't like? Um, here's what the second expert, Mr. Mark Reynolds, said a few years ago at uh, the DevOps Belgium conference. He said, when you compare Ant versus Maven, what's the di difference, actually? And he said, well, the creator of Ant has apologized. And the creator of Maven didn't. Well, uh, we'll find out whether um, it's okay to not apologize for Maven or if he, he, the creator of Maven really had to, to do this. Um, from my point of view, I worked at a project uh, at NS with 25,000 lines of end scripting, and um, 
when I first started this project, I, I, I literally cr cried when I saw this code and when I tried to, uh, to modify it and I didn't even know where to start, you know? Um, so I'm happy that the creator of Antis apologized. He said, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but sorry, some things didn't work out the way it should have been. So, so let's sum up a few uh, characteristics of these three build tools and see which one excels at which point. Well, so the build script format, I talked about this. Uh, Anthem Maven uses XML. Gradle uses a groovy uh, syntax and also provides a domain-specific language, an API that you can use to uh, perform all kinds of tasks. Uh, dependencies are built in in Maven and Gradle, and if you use Ant, you, you need to use the IV library to get your dependencies. Uh, if you want to do a multi-module build, which in our system at uh, the Dutch train company is the case, uh, in Ant this is very complex. This was one of the things I cried about on my first day at, the, at that project. Uh, Maven and Gradle uh, offer fairly simple multi-module uh, build support. A predefined structure is completely absent in end. You could do just about any, anything in end if you, uh, if you write a target or, or, or a macro dev for it. Um, in Maven and Gradle, there is some kind of structure. Maven uses life cycles, for example, to, to ensure that there is some sort of order in your uh, build, uh, build procedure. And Gradle uses uh, kind of the same thing. Um, so if you wanted to apply a custom structure, well, at the end, column I said not applicable because end is, is, is all custom structure. There's just no, no structure at all unless you really think about it and, and uh, define it yourself. Um, in Maven, it's quite, uh, quite hard to, uh, to create your custom structure because you have to uh, uh, mod modify the, the, the current order. You have to stray from this life cycle and attach to a phase, and then you can do some extra steps. And in Gradle, this is fairly simple to create your own custom structure. Now, verbosity, uh, this is also part of the subject, of course, because we're talking 25k lines of end scripting. Uh, in end, in it's, it's really high. Uh, in Maven, it's average. And in Gradle, it's quite low. Um, I've, I've, uh, I've uh, researched this by trying to uh, uh, create a project which does exactly the same and uses all three build tools. And I could just compare the lines of code in the build script. And this was what uh, I encountered. So. Well, what if you want to learn about this technology? Um, w w w when you are new to end, uh, the learning curve is quite shallow because a new project is, is like all over the place. You need to learn where to start. There is no structure, so it's very hard to begin somewhere. Um, Maven and Gradle offer, uh, uh, Maven uh, in particular offers the standard lifecycle structure. So if you open a Maven project, you, you already know uh, where to look or, or which order is going to be applied. So. The learning curve is quite steep. You can learn very fast in a, in a limited amount of time. And I guess with Gradle, it's, it's about average. So what did we do at uh, the Nederlandse Spoorwegen, at NS, the, the train company, with Gradle? Well, I touched on this a few times. Um, this was like the project started in uh, 2008, and we inherited some end scripting from a previous project at the train company. I'm not sure why, I wasn't present at the time, but we did. And um, um, so this concluded into uh, the, the these 25,000 lines of end scripting. And uh, in total, this system consists of one million lines of code, Java code, database scripts, configuration. Um, 30 software developers are working on this system and uh, at our build server. Uh, this system used to behave like a monolith, so one, one small change in one file would trigger a build of the entire system, so a build would like run for 90 minutes or something, which was way too long. So, we wanted to migrate, and the first thing we wanted to do was, um, while we were at it, also try to divide this project into uh, functional components. So let's say a small part of the system is, is responsible for managing all the train movements. The other one is, is, uh, is the, the planning of the trains, uh, at what time they should leave. We, we isolated a few parts, and um, uh, while we were at it, we, we migrated these small parts to Gradle. And when there was a commit on one of these parts, only that specific part would be built on the build server. So we, we uh, had some shorter build times uh, on the build server. We also try to focus on code that is used regularly, because uh, when this migration project started, I went to the project manager and I said, we want to replace 25,000 lines of end scripting. And he says, how long will it take? And I said, um, I don't know, about uh, three, four months. And he said, well, that's, that's way too long. Um, and he was right, of course, because 
you know, uh, when you spend uh, an amount of time and, mig and a migration, you also need to be sure that you will get this time back eventually, so that you will win time in the end, so because of shorter build times or because uh, junior developers who start at the project uh, can uh, understand the build scripting more easily. So we try to focus on code that is run regularly, like on a daily basis, multiple times per day, like uh, compiling, running automated tests, uh, computing code coverage, and deploying to, uh, to a, a test uh, um, test environment. Uh, but there were also quite some bits in the end scripting that were used like once a month, uh, like uh, deployed to production or some other configuration stuff. And we didn't focus on that part, we focused on the regularly used parts so that we would win as much time as possible. And we had to verify after each step that the results were exactly the same as before. Um, because we knew beforehand that uh, there would be some end code left behind that was not re used regularly, uh, but this end code would still should still be able to um, to understand the outcome of the Gradle scripting. And um, most problems we had with uh, the values in the manifest uh, files, they needed to be exactly the same as before, so we, we had to check that these results were the same, so that the artifacts that were produced were exactly the same. Um, and after each component that we uh, migrated, we, we checked that these, these two things still Hold, uh, held true. So, and this I said this before. Don't don't fool yourself. Not every single line of end code should be replaced. Uh, uh, actually, you can just call uh, existing end targets from Gradle. We, this is a, a strategy that we used uh, a few times because uh, a few parts we already knew about. We're not going to migrate these parts, so let's just call them from Gradle, and that's that's working quite nicely. Oh, there were a few challenges uh, when we are were migrating. And um, they all had to do with uh, technical depth. Um, so in this project, we had all kinds of dependencies in the end code. We built all kinds of workspace directories with jar files in them and, and even different versions of jar files. So uh, at the first day, I had, to, I had to scoop up all these jar files and make sure that there was only one version. Uh, it was quite a, quite a mess. So we, we tried to clean this up try to uh, make these dependencies transitive and um, make sure that there was only one one instance of each file uh, uh, left. And um, also try to um, um, upload this to the uh, the artifactory ma manager, the or the Nexus, so the type Nexus. Uh, so the collaboration with existing end code still needed to, to be uh, flawless, you know, nothing could go wrong, so, so we had to tackle that. And um, we also needed to change some um, uh, settings for the continuous integration and delivery plugins to make sure that all would run seamlessly on the Jenkins server. So what's the result of this migration? If someone starts in our team, the responsibility of a component has become much more clear. Uh, a build will only run if the particular component has changed. Uh, Gradle decides when to run our unit tests in parallel, so the build is uh, running quicker. And uh, these dependencies behave transitively, so no multiple jar files with, mul with uh, multiple versions anymore. So this is, uh, these are the, the hard numbers. I guess we replaced a little over 10,000 lines of end code with uh, uh, 1,200 lines of Gradle code, which do exactly the same, so it's quite... Uh, quite uh, an improvement in, uh, or, or you know, a decrease in verbosity, so an improvement. <laughs> um, and um, well, the, the other lines of end code, we just, we use it not very often, so we, we keep them there for now, but we are still planning to, to migrate them if, if, we, if, we can, um, if we can say that it, it really will help us gain performance. But we were not sure about it at the time, so for now it's like this. So Mr. Louis van Gaal, which is our last expert, what does he think of the question, should we migrate all end code, all the, uh, all the lines of end code? And um, in an interview with uh, some British press, when they asked him, this was a very easy opponent, you now defeated, uh, but what are you going to do when you uh, have, to get, uh, have to win against Chelsea next week? He literally translated a Dutch s a proverb and said in the Netherlands, they say that is another cook which the British press, of course, didn't understand because this is a Dutch expression and it means, um, literally, it says uh, another biscuit and um, literally it, it means it will be much harder to defeat the next opponent and uh, like, uh, likewise, it means to migrate all end code will be much harder, so uh, you have to think about it. Do you really want to do this? Will you, will you gain time or, or not? 
Let's wrap up because this monitor is flashing at me. Um, and to Maven require hard to maintain code, and um, they rely heavily on XML, and Linus Torvald doesn't like XML, and neither do we. Uh, so Gradle is a better alternative. Um, so no drawbacks whatsoever. Well, of course, Gradle spends a lot of time on configuration parsing. This has improved in the past year. Um, but uh, if, if you start to build the first time, it could take a little longer than Ant or Maven. And you have to get used to it, of course. Um, so should your project use Gradle? I think if you're starting a brand new project, you should just do it. You should do it right now. Um, because it's a green field, you don't have any limitations. If you have an existing project, you need to think Will I benefit from Gradle's key features? So will I gain, will I, do I need a better performance? Do I need better maintainability? Do I want to be less verbose? If, if you answer these questions with three times yes, then you can do it. And if you have any technical, technical debt to solve like we did at the train company, you should try to solve it before you start your migration. And I guess the migration will run more smoothly. Some further reading if you're interested. The first article is quite good but by Benjamin Mosco. He also compares Gradle to Ant and Maven and says a few things about that. So that will be all. Thanks very much for your attention.